Hey, Matt, how's it going today? Hey, how's it going, Scott? Not too bad. Congrats on the launch of uh, the new course on Cybrary, the Cloud Governance Thank Principles you. course. That's cool. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, we've all been looking forward to that. But uh, I want to hear more about that, that for sure. I know that uh, a lot of people are really excited about it. But uh, before we jump into that, would you mind just telling us a little bit more about your role at Cloud Tamer? Sure, sure. So I'm a customer training engineer at Cloud Tamer. More than anything else, I focus on just delivering sort of content and programs for, uh, you know, our current customers, potential customers, uh, really to keep them informed, uh, keep them, you know, feeling confident and comfortable using Cloud Tamer, right, um, every day, make sure they know it, the ins and outs. Uh, so that's sort of what I focus on doing. As sort of part of that, just because it's a lot of content and program creation, um, there's quite a bit of it that gets used internally as well. So I try equally as much to create stuff that's fun and engaging for my peers at Cloud Tamer as much as uh, customers as well. <laughs> no, no, I hear that. That's, that's yeah. cool. And I, you know, given that you have so much exposure with the customers, it kind of makes sense as to why you would land on cloud governance principles as a first yeah. start for Cybrary, right? I mean, are you hearing that a lot from customers or you're identifying that as a, a good starting point for a lot of people? Sure. Well, uh, when we first started talking with Cybrary or really just looking at online training in general, you know, while us at Cloud Tamer, cloud governance is something we live and breathe every day. Cloud governance as like an industry wide term uh, is still very, very new um, in this space. So it's just not widely known. And even those that know it, um, you know, probably know their flavor of it. There isn't, um, you know, the same type of sort of knowledge bar uh, across the industry for, you know, these ideas around, you know, or principles or pillars within cloud governance, um, like there are with other aspects of cloud security today. So it was important just to, you know, more than anything else, share some of those best practices that we've learned by being part of that sort of pioneering effort in cloud governance um, and help, you know, along with some of the, you know, pillars that cloud service providers have, you know, sort of preached over the years, um, you know, really uh, show off and, define these cloud governance principles for a wider audience. So that's, it's, it's where we wanted to start. Um, so that hopefully again, to do more online training, we wanted to kind of build a foundation, so. Yeah, so speaking about online training, you know, everything's gone online training these days with the, the current uh, situation in the world. Yeah. And <laughs> so, but this is the first thing that we've launched on Cybrary, right? Mm -hmm. So is this, is this training similar, different to the trainings we're, we're doing directly to customers? Like what's, what's that sure. like? Sure. So, in, I mean, in previous lives, I kind of cut my, my teeth uh, in uh, field and sales marketing and, um, and for companies and brands that certainly had an online touch uh, through learning. So it wasn't sort of my first rodeo uh, in online learning, but certainly the, since, uh, the first since COVID. And to your point, most of the uh, you know, trainings I'd done at Cloud Tamer previously were very um, you know, high touch in person um, you know, small group, a lot, of, a lot of it focused on the discussion. Um, so with this kind of large scale and online training, uh, I think it was, it was really about just nailing our, you know, sort of the, our, our key audience, who we were talking to. Um, it was just really important to make sure we nailed that um, so that we could upfront really describe who this cloud governance principles course was for. I mean, it's a beginner course, it's a sort of an overview. So it really is, uh, you know, useful um, to many different sort of roles and personas uh, throughout sort of cloud operations and security. But it was, we still wanted to make sure we focused it on certain elements. Um, so, you know, I think that's what made it a little bit different um, is trying to nail that in a time where everyone's, you know, trying to do online learning. Um, it just yeah. was a different lens, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, well, speaking of different lenses, you know, one of the things that that we do, I know whenever you're working with customers, normally it's just through a Zoom lens, right? I mean, yeah. you, you schedule a meeting and, and you sit down and you take them through the curriculum and you get them to where they need to go. Uh, but in this case, you had to pre-record everything. So was that a challenge right. to like get set up and like how did, how did that work? <laughs> Um, you know, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was a challenge. I mean, we had to sort of learn as we were going because we were, you know, embarking on this quest sort of. In, in late spring as a lot of the, the country was going through shutdowns. So some of the more traditional paths that we would have taken in terms of getting together to film this stuff, um, you know, in, um, to, you know, at least to, you know, have some quick iterations together, uh, just obviously wasn't going to happen. Um, so knew that I could produce this co content, you know, here in, <laughs> in my home office, 
Um, so it was just really about making sure we had the right sort of hardware and software to pull it together to still have, you know, sort of a polished uh, end look and feel. Um, so for hardware, it was still, you know, my MacBook uh, Pro that I use. Um, I, the webcam I'm using now is a Logitech C920. It's sort of an industry standard, has been for a long time. Uh, I use a Blue Yeti uh, microphone, uh, which is great just because you have a knob on it where you can change the mic pattern really quick, which is great when I was trying to do voiceover work or be a bit further back and kind of more presentation mode. Um, and then I actually use a green screen too, uh, probably more realistically just a green sheet <laughs> from Amazon. Um, but uh, you know, it's, you can do a lot uh, with computer software these days. Um, and to that point, um, I used uh, primarily uh, to kind of pull all of it together, um, as well as sort of produce uh, the content modules, a piece of software called ScreenFlow. It's kind of a screen capture video editing software. Uh, most people in the industry knows uh, OBS, which is an open source software, very, very similar, um, you know, in terms of doing sort of this presentation and screen capture, it really lended itself to uh, well to this format. So that's cool. That's very cool. You know, I couldn't imagine what it would take to put something like this together. It feels like the biggest book report project ever, right? <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine sure. that the, the background and the outlining and all the things that you need to do to, to lay this sort of thing out. So like, how does that come together? How did you decide on like, what sure. you, it got, cloud governance is a, can be a huge principle, right? A huge idea. So how did you decide on what we we're going to talk about in the course itself? Yeah, no, good question. So, and I think it, you know, it alluded a bit to uh, earlier when I was talking about how we had to sort of nail down this audience early on, and that was kind of interesting in this sort of new paradigm. Um, you know, a lot of those initial conversations of nailing down the audience similarly were about, you know, scripting that syllabus and really locking it in sort of uh, not necessarily line by line or slide by slide or, you know, however it was going to exist in the end. It wasn't about getting those tactics locked. It was about getting those, you know, those main pieces together that so that we could kind of create this sort of linear, you know, story almost that a that someone can follow, that someone can, you know, understand. Um, so that both on the cyber side and the cloud tamer side, uh, we understood there was, you know, very clean expectations of what we're here to learn, um, you know, all that stuff. And it was, it's really important always to nail that kind of course syllabus or that course lock and level set of expectations early. Um, just because if you start to, if one party starts to go down a little bit, you know, down one path that is unexpected, um, you can just get some weird uh, consequences. Um, and more, m more than anything, if one of the parties involved in creating this stuff is a little confused, uh, guess how your learners <laughs> are uh, adapting to this, right? They're probably a little confused too. So um, you know, nailing that syllabus and sort of uh, coming to terms up front with exactly what this course covers or doesn't cover, who it's for, um, was really sort of critical early on before I did any, you know, capture uh, scripting work or, or PowerPoint work. So I guess through that process and even beyond once it's been launched, you know, what's the feedback loop look like? I mean, were you working closely with Cybrary? Mm -hmm. Do you still get, do you get feedback now from, you know, people who have taken the course? Sure. You know, sure. Yeah. So things. kind of both. Um, you get, you know, in the course creation, I'm, you know, you're getting feedback from Cybrary, um, more around sort of their own learning rubric, right? It's not their uh, first time creating online learning. Um, they know what's successful on their own site. And so they, you know, as much as they can, they sell it, hopefully someone like me up for success um, by giving me lots of tips and pointers along the way. So, hey, try this delivery or, you know, instead of using um, a picture here, maybe a graph or, or a, some data that helps drive your point home more, right? So again, they know um, how to sort of use their own tools to get the best response from learners on, you know, their own system. And then on the flip side, right, as much as I wanna just do that, uh, you know, delivering this material and the content itself, um, you know, there was, um, you know, many leaders within Cloud Tamer that helped, um, you know, shape a lot of the content, uh, you know, just to make sure it was sort of fully representing these cloud governance principles in a really sort of well-rounded and agnostic way. So does it help? Ooh, that sounds question great. A bit? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, <laughs> it absolutely did. did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, it absolutely did. Um, I was just sitting here thinking, you know, as I'm kind of glazing over, as I'm staring at the Zoom camera for yet another 15 minutes today. I know, right? That, we all spend so much time in front of the camera these days. And, you know, I know in, in, 
you know, it seemed like in the, in the old world before COVID, um, you could like get on the phone and pace around and like stay active and stay moving. But now we, we've right. locked ourselves into these, um, these seats and we, we look at our colleagues, um, hopefully happy faces all day. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, how, how do you, how do you go about, you know, I guess maybe right. some tips or tricks to bring your best self, uh, to zoom and kind of avoid the zoom fatigue that everybody's sure. talking about. Sure. Sure. Um, and it's real. Um, glad you asked because it's, it's certainly real. I feel it myself. Having done, worked uh, pretty much only remotely for companies uh, most of my career, um, it, 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 it's certainly new now in that everyone's doing it, right? Everyone's got a little bit better Zoom etiquette. Um, but I think in how I've been able to in, uh, sort of continuously able to sort of stick with it and still have fun when I show up to, to meetings and, um, and engage, is um, I think first it's about like making it easy for yourself. Like don't struggle <laughs> to be, to, to, and make it difficult. Um, you know, and if that means, especially, you know, hopefully you work um, in a place or for a company, for someone that like values, you know, if they want you on video, you know, values your time there. So getting yourself set up with the right space, the right equipment um, so that, you know, being on video isn't a hassle more than it has to be. It should, you know, the hassle should be, oh, my audio settings for some reason, this one time, you know, 1% of the time just didn't lock in. Otherwise, you know, uh, getting on a Zoom is like picking up the phone, right? If you just make it easy, then it doesn't seem that hard, weird. <laughs> um, and I think too, with that, like, don't just think of the, the tech behind it, but your space, what's behind you, um, you know, how you're dressed. Like I, you know, I, I don't feel good if I'm on a meeting and I don't, look or if I feel like I'm not looking my best I know I'll, um, I'll I'll be compelled to turn my camera off and just keep my audio on whatever it may be so I think it's just like doing my little part to, to show up <laughs> a little bit um, I think just it goes a long way um, in just making you feel comfortable that you are in camera it doesn't give you any additional anxiety stuff like that um, in and Zoom then, as it is in life, Matt. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> and something that I, I do, I would say almost religiously, and I try to tell quite a bit of you know, a few of my peers to as well, is schedule put and put time on your work calendar. Um, again, you know, like manager <laughs> approved it and such, like clearing it with, you know, the right parties, but putting time on your calendar where you're not on Zoom. Like where you have work to do, where you know you're not going to interact on a call um, and, and having that block for yourself where you know you can get other work done. Because it's more, I think it's more than just like getting on a video chat and engaging in that style conversation. But I think with meetings all of a sudden becoming, you know, 100% Zoom or 100% remote, um, I have less and less time to just like focus and iterate in my own brain. Um, and I, you I would get that sometimes by being in an in-person meeting or having time in between meetings um, to do some of that work. Um, but in a Zoom driven world um, where it's so easy to create meetings with everyone else, um, it's increasingly hard to find that time for yourself to stop, to think, to, uh, to you know, iterate or work on something that you just couldn't do with someone else mm -hmm. or with just the distraction of yet another Zoom meeting. <laughs> so, yeah, right, you're right. No, they just yeah. keep coming. So, well, that's great, man. Thanks for taking the time to chat through. No, appreciate this stuff. And um, you know, thanks for running down this library um, course for us. How do you, you know, how, how do we find it? I, I've already seen it. I've already gone through the course. But sure. you know, if a user wanted to check it out, how do we get there? Yeah. So, cloud governance principles. Uh, it's a 35 minute, uh, you know, cloud governance overview. You can find it on cybrary.com today. Uh, you can sign up and uh, take a peek. Nice. Awesome, man. Well, that's pretty exciting. I look forward to more great content to come. All right. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it.